our daily routine itself is scheduled. So first I need to wake up and then I have to brush and then need to have my coffee and then work. So my brain is my scheduler. Hi, welcome to the data tech. So today we are going to discuss about Apache Airflow. Apache Airflow is a scheduler and it is free open source and company have already started using it. So now I'll tell you what scheduler is all about. A company CEO has a problem at managing and maintaining his time and schedule. So he appoint an assistant. She helps him to get all the tasks scheduled, his meetings, phone calls and even the coffee. Now imagine the CEO is actually your job, your Python code or a Java code or even the SQL code. Now he has a trouble in scheduling that. Okay, now there is an assistant. Let's consider that as a schedule. Let's consider that as an Apache Airflow for now. Now assistant helps us to schedule our Python code, Java code based on the schedule intervals that you have given. Every day morning 9 a.m. I have to trigger. Then the assistant helps you to trigger the job. Now things all got settled well. For example, you have a Python code and that Python code for every time when you trigger the code, it generates a file in a directory. Now you have to schedule this. For example, every morning 9 a.m. your code has to get triggered and then it has to write the file in a directory. So manually doing this is a complex. So that's where the scheduler comes into picture. So you can schedule your jobs like daily basis, hourly basis, monthly, quarterly, yearly as well. So not only that, even you can make a lot of dependency check. For example, only when my first code runs, the second code has to run. So this kind of dependency also, you can do it. So any other schedulers in the market can also do the same. But Airflow is very famous and people have already started using it a lot. So that's where people are just moving towards this Airflow. Now, whether you are a software engineer or a data engineer or a data scientist, knowing one such scheduler and adding that as part of your skill set will give you more advantage. And now this is not going to be our primary skill set, though you can add this as part of your skill. So you don't want to spend a lot of time in knowing what is this Airflow and all. I'm here for you. So I have made a lot of videos about Airflow and you can find the link in the description box of this video, the playlist link. So today we are going to cover the key components of Airflow and the architecture of Airflow. Let's get ready to the topic. So we are going to discuss about some of the key components of Apache Airflow. So the very first key component that which we need to know is DAC. So which is Directed Acyclic Graph. So what does that mean? So DAG is a collection of tasks in a way that it defines their dependencies and order of execution. So the graph is directed and that means it moves in a specific direction and it does cyclic and it is not cyclic for example so the first step you wake up and then the second you brush your teeth and third breakfast so now this is a, a kind of a task that you have and this needs to be in an order which is directed but make sure it is cyclic or acyclic so when we say acyclic because it does not loop back on itself Right, so that is a cyclic. Cyclic means it can or it may look back. For example, you wake up, you brush and you have your breakfast. And after having your breakfast, you are not going to brush. Right, so you do brush and then breakfast. So that is what a cyclic. So that is one of the important thing. And that's why we call it as an acyclic, directed acyclic graph. So why it is important? So it allows you to manage complex workflows where the execution of some task depends on the completion of others, right? So that's the first thing. And then second, task. So what is task? A single operation or step in your workflow. So this could be anything from running a Python script or querying your database or sending an email. So why it is important? So task or the building blocks of your DAG, each task does a specific piece of work in your workflow. So what do you mean by workflow? I was keep on saying this word twice, right? So workflow. So workflow is just imagine a group of tasks are called a workflow, like T1, T2, T3s. For example, if you see here, we have three tasks. So you can call it as a DAG or you can even call it as a workflow. Right. So this is the second key component. Now, what is the third key component? Operator. So an operator defines a single task. It's a template that tells Airflow what kind of work needs to be done. Example, it includes Python operator for running Python code, bash operator for executing bash command, and an email operator for sending in emails. So why it is important again? So operators are used to create tasks in your DAG. They provide the functionality to perform various types of work. Now, what is the next one? 
So what do you mean by that? So authoring a DAG means writing the Python code to define your DAG and its tasks. So this is completely, I'll show you in practical in my next video. So to create your DAG, you have to create a Python file and that's what we call it as authoring a DAG. So why it is important? This is how you create and configure workflows in an Airflow. So by authoring a DAG, you tell Airflow what tasks to run and how they are related. So it's like all you have to write the PY file and in which you have to configure all the details about like what interval the job has to be run and when it has to start and where the scripts are or what is the code and which code you have to trigger. So everything will be there within that PY file and that's what we call it as authoring a DAG. So now the next key component, scheduler which is very important key component. So scheduler is actually like your brain, you know. So the scheduler is responsible for triggering all your tasks. So you have tasks and that has to be get triggered, right? So you have your task, you have your operator, you are authoring a DAG by creating a PY file, it's all okay. But the scheduler, the job is to schedule the job, right? It has to schedule your task. So scheduler is responsible for triggering the task. It looks at the scheduler intervals of DAG determines when task needs to be run and place them in a queue. Okay, it all, so the scheduler reads all the information from the PY file, which we call it as authoring a DAG, and it gets all the information, and based on that, it keeps your task in the queue. Right, so now, the next important key component is executor. So, executor is actually a process. It's actually a process, okay. So the executor handles the execution of the task. So it is a process which actually uh, handles your execution, the file, the PY file, whatever you have written inside it. So the scheduler puts that in a queue. Now the executor is going to run it, right? So now it receives tasks from the scheduler and runs them on the worker nodes. So that is what you, you may get a question. So what is worker node? So that is the next key component I'll be telling you worker. So worker is nothing but a machine, a computer. Okay, so worker is nothing but a computer and we call this as worker and within this worker, the executor gets starts. So it's a process. Okay, so within this worker, a executor has been getting created as a process and this process will actually execute your task which you have written in the PY file. And this worker node is responsible for giving the resource for that particular executor to execute the task. Okay. So in simple, workers are the node that actually executes the task depending on the executor type. Okay. So if you see, in executor, we have two types. So we have something called local executor and then remote executor. So we will be discussing more about this in a separate topic, but I just don't want to make this particular episode more complex by explaining all this. Just keep in mind you have two types of executors. Okay. Now, so workers can be local process or a distributed node or even a container that is completely based on what type of executor that you choose. Fine. And the functionality of this worker is perform the actual computation or the operation defined in the task, such as running a Python script, querying a database or calling an API. Now, the next thing is again an important point metadata database so what does that mean so metadata database is the central repository for the airflow state and configuration information so it stores metadata about your DAG task schedules and the state of each task for example whether the task is running or it's successful or failed so this database is essential for tracking the progress and history of workflows so common databases, so you can use any databases. So uh, by default, Airflow has its own inbuilt integrated uh, SQLite DB for store all the metadata. This is just for the local development, but in external, but in general, in real time, in production, you can, you have to use the external DBs. You should not use that one which comes with the Airflow. You have to use like uh, MySQL or Postgres or Oracle or any other database. But metadata is much important because that's where like entire information of your uh, task and workflows get stored that helps the airflow to get the information whenever required. This web server, so Apache Airflow, it's completely an open source, it's free to use. 
So Apache Airflow gives you a web UI where you can able to monitor all your tasks, workflows, DAGs and even you can trigger the jobs once the workflow is created. So you created a PY file and obviously you go to the web UI, you can able to see your DAG which is actually the job and within the DAG you can see all the tasks and if you want to trigger the task you can trigger or you can mark the job as success or fail or you have to restart so you can do all this so which with the help of this web server and again like Airflow has CLA also the command line interface is also there but uh, mostly we use web servers just to do all the activities in the Airflow so these are the 10 important key concepts that a person should know before getting into the Airflow and this is the overall architecture as well so so if I want to give you as an architecture diagram so how it all starts like so it starts with web server and then metadata database and then scheduler and then executor executor runs on worker node which is the computer so this is the architecture and the lineage of how the Airflow actually starts your DAG. So Airflow, you can install it in any environment. You can even install it in Linux or Windows, which is highly possible. You can use this for anything. Like it's not about just use Airflow for big data like Spark or Hadoop. You can use it for anything, even a normal cell script or Python script or Java code anything for anything you can use so in my upcoming video i'll be showing the practical stuff like how to install airflow and then we can move on to how to schedule a job so please touch with my playlist link so you can find the airflow playlist link from the description box of this video and if you really like this video please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues and share it in the linkedin as well thanks for watching